You're listening to the Tabernacle of Prayer Sermon of the Week. We hope this message will encourage and inspire you to grow in the Lord. Let's get started. I'll go in. I want to talk about shepherds, right? I want to talk about uh, shepherding, what shepherds have to do. But I want to talk about David, right? Um, I want you to hear this. You don't have to really get it, but I'm going to read this. Amos 4 and 13, set it up. For behold, he who forms, this is in the Amplified Classic, he who forms the mountains and creates the wind and declares to man what, he's, his, what is his thought. Now, that got me because God declares what you're getting ready to think. What you think that you own, you don't own. He, he, declares, he declares your thought. That means how far, even if you thought about murder, he declared it. He saw that you was going to think about murder, and he did not stop your thought process. He allowed it. Didn't do anything to you. He, he, what is his thought? What makes the mountains, the morning darkness, and, and treads on the heights of the earth? Right? Who makes, sorry, who makes the morning darkness? The morning darkness. Who makes the morning darkness? At the beginning of of the day, it's dark, but it's still called morning. Morning starts to happen at the a.m. hour. So at 12 a.m., it's morning. You don't say 12 p.m. 12 p.m. is afternoon. And it, it's the same numbers. It's just a different declaration. That's <laughs> crazy. Right? We know that at 12, we say, if I say it's 12, you declare it's what if you're working? Afternoon, afternoon. Yeah, but what do you do at, at, at 12? You, who taught you that? Nobody actually has to teach you because you can take lunch at any time. But since it's been declared so much, <laughs> you change to make it fit. Something, do y'all get what I'm saying? I hear what you're saying. It, it, no, 12 don't mean lunchtime, but That's we declared it true. then. That's very so 12 p.m., it, and we call it p.m. We don't, y'all, okay. The, let me not go there. So now, he declares that it's dark, but it's morning. I want you to hear me. That change comes in your life at the darkest point. But he declares it morning. And because you don't see the light change, you still feel like you left out. Amen? Now, why did you read that? I read that because I want to talk about David briefly. David has to, right? In order for David to fulfill his divinic prophetic covenant. Now, in order for us to understand God, he had to make a covenant. The covenant is the revelation of him. Yes. Right? Yes. Because we, never under, we would never understand God unless he binds himself to something that's understandable. Right? We wouldn't understand him. How could we understand his vast ways? So he makes a covenant with man. And in that covenant, he starts to reveal himself. He reveals himself in, in different ways, but he also puts himself in guidelines. Right? He puts himself in guidelines, and he binds us to him for us to understand him. And he puts, and that's where you get the law, right? But then you have to get grace also. Because there's got to be a way back to get back to the covenant. Yeah. Salvation is a covenant, a blood covenant. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But grace don't have no blood on it. <laughs> Jesus Christ did not die for grace. He died for salvation. Right. But grace is added. Yeah. If grace is not added, salvation won't work for most of us. Because the salvation covenant has always been broken. It's been broken by all of us. Even us in this room right now broke salvation before we got here. Yeah. 
Y'all, y'all get what I'm saying? So there's got to be there's got to be something that implements a change to what you used to. David is a shepherd. He's a shepherd. That's his occupation. Nobody ever said get ready to be a king. Nobody. And you would you would have left him as a shepherd. Why would you have left him as a shepherd? Lord, thank you for taking me here. You would have left him as a shepherd because he was probably one of the best. Everything David did, he, 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 he exceeded it. And so what we do is people who exceed one thing, we leave them there till they die. Because we are getting what we need. We don't take a person who's doing really well in ministry and they're doing really well in, let's just say, they have the children's church. We don't take a children's per- person and be like, okay, the children's church is so good that I'm going to make you a system pastor. No way in the world. We say, the children's church is so good that we're going to leave you there. Right. You're so good in my choir. Y'all not hearing me. You're so good in my choir that you're going to stay there in my choir. Why? Because it meets your, your overachieving meets the need of someone else. Ooh. And it keeps you bound because you feel safe because it's not a change. You're only doing what you're good at, not doing what God called you to do. Okay. All right. All right. Can, does anybody get what I'm saying? You are good at sitting here. You are really good at sitting here. It would just be difficult if we switch roles. Then you would start to complain. Nobody's complaining about sitting here. Oh, pastor, I'm better than you. Let me get up there. No, you ain't doing that. No. You're so happy sitting there that you won't move. You're so happy sitting where you are that you would never, ever, 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 ever say, let's switch. Why? Because this right here is what you're good at. What I'm good at, going to work every day, complaining about my manager, complaining about my kids' grades. Oh, I'm good at this. I'm good at it. Complaining, getting home, but making dinner. Still complaining. Y'all ain't hearing me, ain't saying amen. I'm good at I'm good at complaining about my weight. I'm good at saying, oh, I'm not going to do this no more. Oh, I'm good at saying all them clothes that I can't fit. They're 14s and you're 18. That means four years of clothes that you said you was going to give away. Every year you got a size bigger. Don't say nothing. Men, you know them pants is too tight and too short. Give them away. But we complain about it, but we keep it there because it's safe, because change, you like going in your closet looking at what's been there for a long time. Oh, God. I'm setting something up. You know why? Because, because... Because what you retain is the memory you retain. At some point, sheep had to, had to give David memories because he didn't have the interaction of his brothers or father. So he probably named them. Yo, you still don't get it, huh? Okay. He probably named them and he was so good with them that he made the sheep his family. Oh, you don't believe me. We'll start making animalistic people our family because family get rid of us. And you become what you're not supposed to become. At some point, God had to take David from sheep because he started being too much of a shepherd. Not getting, okay. Here we go. Let's go. Um, Let's read. I want you to read. Because I'm, 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 I'm crunched with time now. I want you to read, uh, get 1 Samuel 18 and 2. 1 Samuel 18 and 2. Let's just start at 1 Samuel 18. 1 Samuel 18. Somebody shout out hallelujah. hallelujah. I said somebody shout out hallelujah. hallelujah. When I say somebody, that means everybody. Amen. That's just the, get, the ghetto way of saying everybody. Sorry. I should just say everybody. We got to break a lot of stuff. Now, when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan, that's, that's Saul's son, for some of you who do not know, was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. 
I want you to remember this. He might have loved him as his own soul, but he wasn't his father. Okay? You'll know that later. <laughs> For you smart people. Now, when he finished... Oh, two. Yes. Saul took him that day and would not let him go home to his father's house anymore. This is where your ministry is going to change. When your enemy embraces you. Most of us Pentecostal people and our color codes run away from the enemy and if this was to happen, we'd have been home from uncomfortability. And most of us don't change because it's uncomfortable. Ask your muscles. It's, you need food every day. But the thing you hate Everybody hates this. Carrying groceries in the house. Some of y'all ain't said nothing. Carrying groceries, because some of y'all don't carry them. Hey, but carrying groceries in the house gets on your nerve. Do I got anybody in here who do not like? Some brothers that know what I'm saying. I don't like when I have to carry groceries. I will put 17 bags on one arm. My wife will tell you. My wife be, you ain't supposed to be carrying that stuff with that kidney. Yeah, I'm, I don't want to come back. I'm not making two trips. I don't want to come back. I, I, I'd be struggling up the stairs like this. <laughs> and she'd be like, stuff be falling out the bag. I'd be leaving bananas in the back of the car. They'd be getting rotten. I'd be looking, didn't we pay for bananas? Yeah, you, you, you wanted to carry everything, right? Something wrong with us, but we know we need the food. And so it burns our muscles. And we hate that it burns, but we love the food. We hate the work that we have to do. But some of us, come on, hear me. God is saying it's time to change. You had a good job. I don't know why I'm preaching this. You had a good but now it's time to go to the unknown. And the invitation to the unknown does not come from your brother or sister in Christ. It comes from someone who's going to chase you. Someone who's going to throw a javelin at you. But they also need you to play the music to calm them down. And because we think we got the Holy Ghost, we say no. Because it's too unbalanced. And God wants to give you change in, in an unbalanced situation. God needs to take you from where. I'm talking to somebody. You better hear me. God needs to take you from where you are to where you're going. And it has to come from an enemy. Okay. Let me prove it. Let me prove it. Let me prove it. Let me prove it. Uh, this is some of the things that the shepherd has to do. DJ, this is some of the things the shepherd has to do. A shepherd has to... Uh, shepherds in ancient Israel worked with other people, right? Yes. They also had goats. Yes. The goats were different colors. They were black or brown, right? Uh, the season of the shepherd. In the spring... Uh, the shepherd might take his flock from a pen to graze in fresh grass. This is all the stuff that David had to do, right? Uh, during this season, there was birth of lambs and kids, right? They called them kids, all right? That would make the, the flock bigger, right? Those who had, those who had a, small, a small quorum of sheep, they would hire a shepherd. Right. The shepherd would take now this is this is what I found strange. The shepherd would because uh, uh, the shepherd would take his flock and mingle them with someone else's flock. Wow. Leave them in the pen and then take them out and graze. Mm. And then he would let his flock and the other person's flock coexist to produce more. And that's how he got paid. 
But then I want you to hear something that the Lord showed me. Um, that's why Jesus, when he talks about shepherding, he says, I'm the good shepherd. Because there were evil shepherds that when they would get somebody else's flock, they would mistreat them. They would scheme. So if one, if one was, they would, they would, they would make take somebody's strong sheep, and let them. Okay, so that's why Jesus said, "I am the good shepherd. I'm not going to take your, what you have and taint it." That's good. Oh boy. Um, uh, let me make this quick, Lord. Yeah, thank you. I'll make it quick. Uh, I want to talk to you about something. Uh, and this is all about change, right? I want to talk to you about something. I, the Lord said, uh, he showed me, took me to this thing, and I was watch, looking at the equipment of the shepherd, right? And this is what got me. Um, the shepherd's clothing was, was simple but robust, right? Uh, he had to have something to protect him from the frigid night air. Uh, he wore a mantle, uh, fleece, skin turned inside out. Uh, he had sandals on his feet, sharp rocks and thorns and stuff to, to protect him from all that. Uh, he had uh, bread and olives and fruit and cheese. He had a rod, which was a formidable weapon, uh, something sharp, you know, like a, a staff with a knife on the end of it. So if a wolf came, he doesn't have to get close to fight. He can poke, right? Uh, he had a sling, which David had, right? Um, he had... Uh, things for strange sheep. So come almost like he would tie something around the leg of a sheep who would, who would uh, always wander off. It's almost like how we see some of these parents, they got a leash. Y'all talk about it, but y'all scared now. Don't say it. Look, yeah, they put a leash on their kids. Y'all know what I'm talking about, huh? See the kids run off. Come back, Johnny. That's too far, Johnny. <laughs> okay. Uh, had, something, had something on the sheep. But the Lord said, stop right there. You, when David, when David, what made David exceptional is this. When he fought the lion or, or, and the bear, it, it doesn't describe his weapon. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It doesn't describe him poking it with a weapon from far away. He got his hands dirty with the animal that he was fighting. He grabbed something by the beard. So that means he had that he had to have supernatural strength. He wasn't just a regular man. Yeah, we think that David was just regular. I don't know a normal man. I saw, uh, now I'm going somewhere, I'm almost done. I saw Mike Tyson. They had a video of Mike Tyson sparring his tiger. And it was unbelievable to see how fast he was. Like, like inhuman speed where he's ducking and the, the, the tiger can't really pull at him. And I'm going, this is crazy. But David grabbed one by the beard and overpowered him. Wow. Maybe that's why God deemed him to be king. Because the difference between him and Saul is Saul never touched the people. Saul really never got intimate with people, but David did. Yes, he did. And his intimacy became sin. Okay, okay. Here we, here we, here we, let's not, let's not go to, D David, David is, is, is a king that's a shepherd for a season. But God got to convert him, even though he's so good at what he does, he needs to be converted because he's not made to be a shepherd. He's made to be a king. And so the Lord showed me something. He said, what was David wearing? If he had, he, he had to, he was wearing the skin of a sheep. At some point, he had to kill one of the things that he loved for it to be his protection to the next level. Ooh. You don't want to hear this, everybody in here, but there's something you need to kill and wear it. You got to skin something and put it on you because you need it to protect you from the elements. God is asking you to kill something and not sacrifice it. This wasn't a sacrifice. 
<laughs> this was a necessity. Yeah. Jesus. We think we come in here today to kill a sin. No, you can't kill sin. You kill ideas. I'm killing ideas in your head that you ain't greater than what you are. I'm killing ideas in your head that you can't have what God said you were supposed to have. I'm killing the idea in your head that you are not a title. You are a prophet. You are a prophet that has not been anointed publicly. You are an evangelist that has not preached one meeting. But God don't care. He gave you the title before he gave you the work. But if you don't change, you'll never get it. All right, let's make this quick. What changed David from doing all that was very simple. I read 18, right? First Samuel 18, but I did not read 17. Turn to 1 Samuel 17 and 18. 1 Samuel 17 and 18. And carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousands and see how your brothers fare and bring back news of them. And carry these ten cheeses to the captains of their thousand, not to the brothers. Most of the time, we think it was to the brothers. It was to the captain of the brothers. I need information. And because I need information, I'm going to send you with some food. I'm going to send you. Now, these cheeses were a result of sheep milk. Y'all not hearing me. I want you to see how, 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 how God is so strategic. That he took what David was watching over. He took the materials of what he was watching over. Gave him a reason to carry it. His father all of a sudden wants news. And so David now is carrying a product of what he was watching. And when he gets there, he has to fight Goliath. This is his introduction to kingship. And we are pushing it away. Because it's too simplistic. God is trying to introduce you to the next level of your life by an attendance, by obedience, by a friendship. But listen, y'all not hearing me. By a by a car wreck, by a scratch. And what you're doing is you're becoming non-spiritual. Not seeing why God is pushing you and the way he's doing it. And you rebuke it as if, it's, as if it is a demon. And David became king because of some cheese. Cheese ain't got no spiritual sense. He, he brought cheese and became the answer to, the Philist to the Israel's problem and fought Goliath. And from that day, he's known. From that day, he would have never came to the fight. Guess what? God didn't send him there. His father did. Y'all looking for the Holy I only listen to the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost ain't tell me, no, God is trying to use somebody that you don't respect that much. That's good. Look at all the hell that David's father put him through. Half breed. I don't know. Your existence. David, read Psalms. Read Psalms. Just look at, just look at this. Some of you, I'm done. Look at, look at how you feel. Look, look, how would he feel if everybody gets a chance to get anointed? Y'all didn't hear me. A chance. He gets a chance to get, everybody got a chance to get anointed, and he's left out. And the prophet leaves him out. The prophet leaves him out. When you start to read Psalms, he says, everybody turned against me. What do you think he's talking about? They said that if something was, if something was lost or stolen, they would all blame David. They would blame, oh, that was that boy out in the field. That was that boy. He must have did it. 
and he felt so rejected like the rest of us sitting in here shouting, speaking in tongue and acting like this message ain't for you. It's for you. You know why it's for you? Because you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing because you're out of season as a shepherd. You're out of season. The field is open to become something else and you refuse it because you're scared of a mic, scared of what people are going to say, scared of the Holy Ghost, scared of, uh, scared of, of, of backlash, scared of this, scared of that. And God is saying, I need somebody who ain't scared of nothing. They scared of not pleasing me. What's your first? Okay, uh, let me get to the nitty gritty. Your first complaint about ministry is always people. You may not say nothing, but your first complaint comes out, well, the people, what? Not God. Because when you're ministering, you don't think God is sitting in the audience listening to you. God don't send a bunch of angels sitting here going, what are you going to preach? It's the people and their faces and their moods. If you can't get past all of that, you ain't worthy. Some of you said no to God so much, you don't even know what yes look like. That two, two letter word, no, 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 because no could be a stiffness in your spirit. No could be just a movement. No is not always, Lord God, I'm not going to. You know how we say no? I'm not ready. He knew that. How are you telling the maker about not being ready? If he called you, if he said do it, he don't care what your body look like. He don't care about the condition of your back. You do. He don't care that you get headaches all the time. Some of you will stay sick because you won't get up. We preach healing is the children's bread. So eat the bread. And serve the bread too. Eat the bread. Serve the bread. But stop complaining about the bread. Healing is the children's bread. You know why healing is the children's bread? Because obedience is the basis of everything. Obedience is the basis of everything. And we don't want to be obedient. I'm not preaching another joy message until you become obedient. And you'll come in here with joy because you didn't fail. You can't fail God by obe being obedient. We went up to Middletown. Did I feel like Middletown hurt us? No way in the world. I'm being obedient. How many people came? Did you come? Don't worry about how many people came. I'm being obedient. I'm being obedient. It's not a knock on nobody. I'm being obedient. We, we, you know what? Oh, God, help me. Help us not. Help us, Lord. You know what the fight, the biggest fight for faith is? Statistics. Let me help you. When the apostles went somewhere, they never studied the de demographic of it. They were sent to the unknown. We study in the world's methods to have a Holy Ghost revival. Ask me, ask, ask Smith Wigglesworth, did he know what he was getting into? He was convinced of the word of God. Because if you're convinced of the word of God, you're going on God's territory to only reclaim what God gave, what God made himself. You, are fight, you think you're fighting a losing battle, but you cannot lose. You can't lose when you're sent. No one sent lost. Never. Never. My, my question is, are you convinced that you're sent? Are you convinced that you heard a word? Are you convinced that you're actually called? We want to play calling on the edge and not dive in. Just in case we made a mistake, we won't say it. Just in case we, we misread something, we don't, we don't talk about it. 
just in case we don't offend somebody, we won't talk about being gay. Just in case somebody there is gay. Assume we're all gay. Just assume it and preach what God says. Whatever he tells you, just preach it. We ain't bashing, we preaching. I know God called me. And I know he called me to a whole different method of winning people. I'm not up here to make you feel, we done, I, I can hoop a little bit, I can do all that stuff. But if I don't give you what's good, you'll never change. You'll sit there comfortable doing what you're used to doing. Which is called failing. Because as long as Gideon stayed threshing wheat for his family, he would still been a provider. But just for a few. But when he became obedient, he provided for a nation. Some of you got nation anointing, but it's locked up in your little apartment. Because you won't be obedient. So threshing wheat in a hole became your normal when God wants you to lead people with your mouth. Not now, my Go ahead, man. You don't know how powerful your mouth is. That's why you can argue real good. But as long as you stay as an argumentative person, you'll never use that mouth for God. You're good at it. You're good at ending arguments. You're good at all that stuff. That was good while you was in the hole. But now God showed up to pull you out the hole. And you're telling God, I can't go. Everything you good at is for a reason. I said everything you good at is for it's for a bigger reason than coming here and looking dry and bored. And shouting on cue. I shout because I'm effective. I shout because I know I'm doing what God called me to do. I don't shout on cue. I shout because I did the work. I ain't questioning myself. Did I give him the word of the Lord? Did I say, well, I'm going to say it? Well, I don't, I'm going to say it if it take me to stay here to five. Because people say, oh, we're here long. Guess what? I'm here longer. You know why I'm here longer? I'm here longer because I'd be wondering, did I do all he asked me to do? If this was my last time, if I walked out here, my car blew up. Did I give everybody what I was supposed to give? Or did I decide when it was to cut off? I ain't going to let not one person dictate to me when it's time to cut off. Get out of my face. Don't come to me about, oh, pastor, you ain't giving me no strength. You didn't give me the strength. He gave you the strength to get up. You wasn't there the day he, that's so cool. When he declared that you're healed, I got up with nobody looking. Now I'm, about to by by. I'm convinced of what I'm supposed to do because I heard him say get up. I had no strength in my legs. I didn't walk for a year. But I heard him say get up. And when he said get up, I got up. There was no hesitation. My muscles had to obey. Your body, some of sure, your body will respond to the command of the leader. He is the leader. Stop worrying about healing. He's already healed you if you get up. You make the change and watch what happens. Immediately, Sambra Suya, immediately I got up. Immediately. Immediately Gideon was changed from a loser to a leader. No one taught him. Who taught David how to be king? Matter of fact, when he leaves, when he leaves in 18, he's never a shepherd again. Never. Wow. He's never, y'all hearing me, he's never a shepherd again. And some of you, you'll be turned into salt because you keep looking back at a shepherd, looking back at the position you had. Because it was glamorous then, and you could handle it. But going to a new church, hearing a new word, I don't know where I'm going. 
I'm going to go to being nothing again. I can't handle it. And you don't even know that you're next. And you refute it. You refute it because you keep looking back at the shepherd status. You keep looking. You got comfortable with loneliness. You got comfortable. You, you got comfortable having a conversation with an animal. Because animals don't respond. You don't like conflict. You know why you don't like conflict? Because you had it all your life. And when somebody stands up against you, you get mad. You don't know how to handle that. And now it becomes, now it becomes something we feel, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, when you start feeling stuff towards your brother and sister. Uh, yeah, animosity and, uh, and, 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 and you become cantankerous and on the inside, right? Because the devil ain't gonna let you just stay there. You know why? Because all this wrong stuff becomes the power of how you respond. And once you take that away, you have no more power. That's why people, when they have witchcraft, it's hard to let it go because they got to give up the power that they had. Why? Because they gained power because they were hurt. You gained that attitude from being hurt consistently. You got that bravado because you needed it. Now he takes it away and says, respond now. And you can't. So what you do, you go in a hole. You don't come out because you don't know how to respond now because God wants to take your authority away to give you a whole nother authority that you ain't used to because authority. You know, I mean, people say all stuff to me and I just go, God bless you. When I could cut them down, I can cut them down by what I know. But authority don't have to respond. Not at all. Not at all. Did y'all didn't hear me because now I, I'm not a shepherd no more. I'm a king. And kings can't keep dealing with little peasant stuff. That's right. Because da David ain't going, surabaka. David ain't going saying, hey, y'all ain't doing my sheep right. He ain't got time. Y'all missed that. Yeah. David ain't going back on, hey, how's my sheep? He's got to go, how's my people? Yeah. 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 Did y'all hear what I said? Good he goes stuff. from saying, not my sheep, now he's saying my people. Y'all hear me? Ministry, ministry is staring you in the face saying, come on. Come on. Come on. And y'all mess the scriptures up. You think, oh, I'm a shepherd. I'm in the word. Yeah, you're in the word, but you missed the change. You missed the change. You missed. Help, y'all, and I'm done. You missed the opportunity that Saul gave you, not the Holy Ghost. And Saul, hold on, I'm, hold on, I didn't even get there. I talked about covenant, right? God makes a covenant with his people. He made a covenant in Genesis. He did. Yes, he made a covenant about the rain, uh, with the rainbow. That's right. Every time God has, to place, God has to place himself in borders for us to understand his power. Okay. God don't prophesy to us, he reveals. God gives us revelation. Whoa. We have to catch up. It becomes prophecy to others when he reveals. Yeah. He has to reveal himself in time. Whoa. He has to take his time to reveal a piece. Whoa. Do you know there's still pieces of God that we don't know yet? We, don't know. we will not know until we're spirit be beings. Because he, so he puts a covenant that we have to abide by because he stops revealing when we break the covenant. That's good, man. I forgot what a, what was I about to say? Just keep going that way. Well, that's I was good. about to say. I forgot what was very important. Okay, so God has to now show us covenant in another way. So he makes Saul make a covenant with David. If you read it and go down, it says that Saul made a covenant. Right? He makes a covenant that he breaks, so he tries to kill him. The covenant ain't really for Saul. The, the covenant is an introduction to the family. 
how is David going to be introduced to the royal family? The reason why he doesn't kill the family is because of the covenant, not Jonathan. Oh, he talks about Jonathan. Oh, he loves Jonathan. They knit their souls together. Great. But Jonathan ain't king. He ain't king. That's the reason why when the young man comes back and says, I killed Saul, he tells his men, fall on him. Kill this guy. How, how, how do you think if I spent all this time running and you're going to kill God's anointed? Right. I spent all this time running from killing him. I didn't run from him. Listen, I know I could have killed him one-on-one -on -one because I'm a beast at fighting. Remember, you only killed thousands, but I killed ten thousands. Y'all ain't get that. I know who I am. So I'm just going to cut a little piece of your skirt off and let you know my ability. Do you understand? I cut the skirt so you can see my ability. My ability is I could have killed you. But why kill you if I'm king already? And I'm not going to kill you because we made a covenant. And I'm going to keep my covenant. And my covenant is what led me to the kingdom. Because when I get there, everybody knows my name. Before I ever take my seat, y'all all know who I am and what I can do. Who's trying to get you to move to the next level? Who on your job be calling you what you are? You know, the sinners are the ones that tell you your title. Sinners tell you, hey, anywhere I go, hey, bishop, and I hate it. Hey, bishop, I ain't no bishop. I don't want to be no bishop. They done messed that title up. They done messed up every title. I just want to be Brother Young. Just call me Brother Young. But, hey, but the sinners are the ones. Hey, bishop, you look like a reverend. You a reverend? How do you know? Are you prophesying to me? No, that's my introduction to the next level. Y'all missed it. You look like a prayer warrior. Oh, not me. That's the first thing we say. We deny the truth. You pastoring yet? Me, pastor? <laughs> not me. I ain't ready for that. You deny it. We deny what of, not the church people, People outside that don't even know where you're going in God call you what you are in God. That's very true. I wonder if the sheep was saying King David. I wonder if the bear said, I got to bow down to the king. I wonder if the lion said, take my beard and grab me, king, because you got the power. Right. See, because what happened, mm, God lets you live in the authority of what you didn't taste yet. Oh, my goodness. Some of you getting pastoral respect already, and you don't, and you don't know why. Some of y'all getting that respect already as a prophet, as an intercessor, and you don't know why. It's, you can't. Un, un, why would God want to make me something? I just got here because you already been that to Him. You just wasn't that to us. Oh, come on, Sakayaka. Today is the day of elevation. Today is the day. Today is the day that you accept who you are and stop putting it on somebody else and stop running away from a place that will curb you. I'm going to go through this church and shut people up. Be quiet until you can announce who you are. Nobody else matters. Problems don't matter. You ain't got to get it right with nobody. Be quiet. You're the problem because your, your anointing should have shut everything down. Shouldn't even been this far. Something in you, Yaya Sata, should have said, be quiet. you too big for this. Kings don't argue with peasants. Somebody got a peasant spirit? Let them be a peasant. Until you get your king at my seat right about to head. Listen, kings don't argue. They go to war. I can't declare war on you. What, what, what does it look like a king declaring war on one person? And that's what we use the Holy Ghost for, to declare war. The devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. Chains got to be on the inside that it changes your method. 
of handling stuff. If your method of change, listen, I have to sometimes call people and be like, what should I do? Where I don't have, I'm 48. I got, I can't say, oh, I'm, I got pastors calling me. I don't need to call nobody. I got people calling me. I'm not going to be arrogant. I'm going to humble myself and say, I don't know what to do. How about, I need your help. This ain't my expertise. I'm not, a gr- I'm not a great at organizing. I'm great at having visions. I have a vision for something all day. But organizing it, that's not my strong point. So I'm not going to act like I'm good at it. I'm going to get help. What the devil does is he sends people to divide your problem. That's what he does. Mm. We don't get nothing done at this church. Don't complain if you ain't put your hand to the wheel. Y'all don't want to say that. Let me tell you something. Something, let me help y'all because some of y'all hot and tired and I'm going to let you go. <laughs> Don't put nobody in your car that complains about your driving. <laughs> Tell them take the bus. The bus driver drives just as nice and peaceful. He makes every stop right. Let him stop at each stop. You get on that bus. Right? A lot of room on that bus. You can have. Or you can take the train. Don't complain about my driving. You were getting in my car. You knew what was getting ready to happen. Huh? So, huh, somebody? Huh? Like Dick Gregory. Huh? Huh? You know what I'm saying? Huh? We complain about the road God has taken us and the people that we got to bump into on that road. They are liars. The liar is aiding you. Be quiet. Look at what Ziba had to do. Anybody with bad intent for you will not stand up against your purpose. So stop taking your time and crying and lamenting over that stuff. They're not strong enough to stop you. I'm so tired of them doing this to me. I am too, honey. I'm tired of all of them doing whatever they do, but they can't stop it because they can't. It's, it is 10 years later. 10 years and two churches later. Let's not, let's keep on going. I got six more to go on my own. At some point, the lies got to stop. Hold on. Let me bust your bubble. At some point, even the truth about you got to stop. Even if it was true, purpose is bigger than that. Stop going back, acting like you got it. If you apologize to God, let God handle it from there on. He knew what was getting ready to happen. Stop all that. Let me go back and apologize. Let me rehash it. Let me bring it up. All you doing is, is, is bringing up something that's dead. Amen. Dead issues need to stay dead. That's right. If you had a problem with your brother and sister yesterday and y'all can look at each other and smile, don't go in the corner and deal with it. Amen. It's over. Amen. Move on and forget it. Amen. You haven't learned that yet. We, we got to go in the corner and talk about it. Don't talk about nothing. If we can look at each other and go, hey, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. You sure? Yeah, all right, love you. And you know it's genuine? Don't be like, well, let's talk about yesterday. For what? <laughs> yesterday is gone, sweet Jesus. And tomorrow, and tomorrow may never be mine. So let's not talk about foolishness. Let's talk about the future. You know, millionaires and billionaires get together and they don't talk about offense. It's just us poor people. We are so offended. <laughs> We're so offended that we call the bank about bounce checks and stuff, knowing that you bounced it. What's all these bounces on my account? What you did? What's all these bounce things? I see all these about 35, 35, 35. Because you kept swiping. You know you ain't had that money. They ain't just saying, here, let's give them seven bounce fees. No. Each fee is connected to what you did. You going back, bringing it up. And all they do is take off one. They take off two if it's your first time. And some of us are repeat offenders. Come on here, somebody. Can't you take off two? No, we took off two 20 times. Stop it. And just think. You can play around. And just think. God sees all our bounce fees. He knows that we did it. And he says, I still want to use you. 
Everybody stand. Who wants change? No, I need you to stand for real and honesty. Who wants change? Thank you for listening to the Tabernacle of Prayer Sermon of the Week. 